OK, I'm going to define a very important class of groups called the symmetric groups. Normally written Sn, where n equals 1, 2, 3, an integer. And what these are, uh, well, the set, this, well, this, the underlying set, is the set of uh, bijections, invertible functions, from the set 1, 2, 3, up to n to itself. Okay, so this is a nice, uh, a nice, uh, nice little set to consider, and it turns out to be very, very important for group theory. This was the uh, uh, the inspiration for the whole, the whole of the theory, really. So bijection is a function one to one and onto, and so it needs an inverse. So that's the first group axiom already. I'm going to take n equals 4, so we've got the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we can just write down the image of uh, each each element underneath it. So let's just say I write uh, 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4, and 1 goes to 2. So that's quite nice. That's a nice little uh, element there. So if I say that that's f, then I can say f of 1 equals 3, f of 2 equals 1, because that's 2 and it goes to 1. f of 3 equals 4, from this row here, as in that column there. And f of 4 equals 2. Now, how do we combine two of these, um, two of these objects here? Well, my way of thinking is that fg should be defined like this. fg is defined like this. So f f g of x equals f of g of x. But this causes all sorts of problems. It's natural to do this, but of course if you take x, if you want to evaluate this thing here, you take x and then you do g first and then f. So it, th this, this way is, is, well you can use it if you like, but it's not very helpful. I know it looks odd, but you define fg like this, fg of x equals uh, g of f of x. This is the right way to do it, or, or the standard way anyway. The way, to, the way to record it, if you want to write it, is this, x goes to x f, and so we're getting x, and then we're doing something to it, which is f. And then we might say x goes to x g for another function. So what's f of g? equals what? Well, x goes to x f, which then goes to x f g. And of course, we specify that x f g equals x f g. So it's like a right group. Well, it is a right group action. Uh, I'll give you an example of that. I'll give you an example of that. Let's just say f equals, well, we'll use this one up here. Three, one, uh, this one here, you see. There, three one four two. Three one four two, and g equals uh, two one four three. Let's just have a look at that. And what's f g? One two three four. We see this is why we can do it because we do f first and then g. So one goes to three, three goes to four, two goes to one, and one goes to two. 3 goes to 4, 4 goes back to 3, 4 goes to 2, and 2 goes to 1. Okay, so there it is. Uh, it's clearly associative. What about inverses? Well, let's work out the inverse for 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 1, 4, 2. Equals, uh, that to minus 1, I guess. 1, 2, 3, 4, well, we'll just read upwards. 1 came from 2, 2 came from 4, 3 came from 1, and 4 came from 3. Uh, let's just make sure that that is in fact an inverse. So I've got this, I've got this, uh, this element here, f, and I've got f to the minus 1, which is here, which I calculated, and I'm just going to check that it does in fact give the correct inverse. Let's try. 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, 
two goes to one, one goes to two. Well, of course it is, it's gonna work, isn't it? Three and four goes to two and two goes to four, so check. So here is the identity element. Uh, it's the identity element, of course, because f of x equals x. Should have started with the identity element, but uh, but I didn't. And it's clearly associative, and it's closed, and all that lot. Yeah, da da da. So it's a nice group. Ha ha. Stop. <laughs>